First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Kakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly, and Shalom unto the Akwaf, which is the women believers, Shalom unto you. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I want to talk about something that's been on my mind lately. And I really feel like um, this video could be edifying for anybody who's out there that, you know, you understand, of course, you can't be perfect, but that's something that you strive for. But you always fall short, as the scripture says, no matter how much pray you do fast we are in these chains of darkness, which is this flesh. And we hope and pray. Which, you know, if you de if you are part of the elect, he is going to judge you by your integrity, your intent. But um, so it said for a just man fall of seven times and rise up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So, you know, the wicked ain't going to repent and they're going to continue to do wickedness. And do iniquity, which is sin upon sin. And they're not going to have, you know, the fear or the sorriness of going off. So I wanted to go into this word seven. And um, the Hebrew word is Shabbat. And so I was looking at this earlier. And I want to get something in this definition. So, as it says, I'm going to highlight it. It said an indefinite number. Now, we know that, you know, most of the time when seven is in the scripture, it's talking about a completion number of times. So, of course, that goes for this scripture, too. But, you know, I really wanted to find you know, a good definition to back it up. So the word indefinite, let's look that up real quick. Shabbat for seven in this scripture. Let's read the scripture again. For a just man fall of seven times. So you think that you know you might get you might go on a stretch. I'm talking about like whatever you deal with, whatever you deal with, you might go on a stretch where you know whatever you deal with, you think you got it under control. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, bam, it pops up again. You know, we all go through things in the flesh, and that's between you and your Hawabash and your Hawashai. That's not for everybody to know. But, you know, it just it's just like, it's really nothing you can do. But when I read this, you know, this is the first scripture that came to my mind. You know, and this ain't, you know, a video about me particular. 
But I was just thinking about, you know, coming in through the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bashmi, I was shy, getting this knowledge, building up my faith. I'm talking about from day one all the way into now. And I was just thinking like, shit, you already like just imagine if the Lord judged you before you came into the truth. But the Lord can judge you while you in the truth. Because we all do things worthy of death, like even just your evil thoughts. And then it's like, you know, but anyways, but the point that I wanted to make, you know, the seven times thing, indefinite number. Which means they don't have a, you know, a set number. It, it, it's innumerable. It's limit. It's, it's unlimited. You know, um, definite is the opposite. Fixed number, you know, definite, you know, um, but. I want to go to Romans 7 and I want to get it in the NLT for it to be better understood. And I want to start from 14. I really know what Paul is talking about right here. So it said the trouble is not with the law for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me for I am all too human and a slave to sin. Why? Because we are in these chains of darkness. And it says, I don't really understand myself for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate because when you really sincere and you are a man of the Lord or a woman, you don't want to do wrong because you know the consequences, but you can't help it. So don't ever have a like, and you know, people don't do it on purpose. Because you're supposed to teach people to keep the law. But sometimes you could come across brothers and you and think that they perfect because the way that they teach, you know. But um, this is all of our fight. First Peter 5 and 9 said that the same problems that you have are accomplishing your brethren. So we all, you know, fight in a good fight of faith and you know, we all have our problems that we go through, whatever it may be. And it said, but if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree with the law that is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. So, you know, at the end of this chapter, you know, the only one that could save us from this body of death is Yahweh Shah. And I really want people, like I say, whoever this is for, you know, you still got, you're going, you, hey, you're going to have men who's, who think they, you know, super righteous. Like you got a reprobate camp, Sakari, basically, <laughs> he basically said he don't sin. Like, wow. But anyways, um, Not 18, it said, and I know that nothing good lives in me that is my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. It's not meant. I mean, I always say this, and I got another video that I forgot to post. I got to stop making um, videos. Um, well, not not let me not say that. I got to stop making videos and forgetting to post. I'll be making videos, and then I, you know, do other things. But anyways, um, I forgot to post that video. So I kind of got this video is kind of similar. Um, we're going back to the point is that we even the scripture says that, you know, flesh and blood should not enter to the kingdom of the most high. And when you go to first Corinthians 15, it talks about how we're going to be changed in a twinkle of an eye. Why do you think that? Number one, what I just quoted, flesh and blood should not enter to the kingdom of the most high. But we have to be changed. This change of darkness is not going into the kingdom. Otherwise, we would be right back in captivity because sin is what brought us in this state in the first place. I'm going to read 18 again and say, and I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I know what you're talking about, Paul. 
I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Come on, man. Paul is preaching right now. You know, but as they say in the church, amen. Like everything that, you know, when I read this earlier in the NLT, I was like, wow, man, this is, it hit my heart. It really, really um actually made me a little emotional too. Because, you know, you really, really have these type of problems. I mean, I'm just talking about if I'm talking about for the sincere men and women, because some people, you know, they might think that the little things that they do ain't nothing. You never know. I don't know. But I'm just saying. But if you really, really care about making it, you really want to please the Lord. You don't want to do anything wrong, but you can't help it. And it says 20. But if I do what I don't want to do, am I not really the one doing wrong? It is sin living in me. That does it. So when I got here, you know, I pondered in my heart and I got uh, rejuvenated and I started thinking, yeah, how about you? I was shy, you know, and I understand now more, especially Psalms 32. It said, blessed is he who the Lord impute not iniquity unto and whose spirit is found no guile. So the elect, the ones who chose from the foundation of the earth which I hope to be one of those. Um, their sins are covered. Now, Yahweh, when he died on the cross, he died for all of Israel, but he died for the remnant first, because that's who's going to be delivered first. And then, you know, the two thirds going to come back through, you know, childbearing in the kingdom. But I want to go on the first go around. You know, that's what we fighting for. Ain't nobody, you know, I think about it all the time, even though you can't brag or nothing. And that's why the scripture said, not of works, lest any man should boast. But generally, I just think about, you know, all the cold days, hot days. You just out there dealing with demons. Nobody listening to you. People talking shit. People staring at you. People threatening you, you know, making your body a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. So you think about that. It's like I, I, I'm doing what I, I'm doing the best that I can. You know, we all do this. We all fight for that penny. You know, and you see the people walking up and down the street when you're preaching you're like you not like them, you know, so you want to make it. But, yeah, so when I got to this scripture right here and I was meditating on, I was like, I get it. The next scripture over Romans 8 and 20, the scripture that I always quote, the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason to be subjected to same hope. See, when you in this. Um, situation where you want to do good, but you can't do good, that naturally. But that naturally gives you a broken and contrite spirit. And guess what? That's what the Lord delight in. The sacrifices of the most high is a broken and contrite spirit, as it say in Psalms 51 and 17. How would you have a broken and contrite spirit right here? It's other ways too, of course, just going through trials and tribulations in life. But right here, when you're trying to do right and you can't even do it, but let me continue. I have discovered the principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Jeremiah 17 and 9 said that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Your heart is deceitful above all and desperately wicked who can know it jeremiah 17 and 9 say that so it's, it's it's inevitable that you going to go off it's nothing you can do about it all you got to do is repent and as a say in wisdom of solomon chapter 11 and 23 oh fin list all right it might be wisdom of solomon 17 and 24 yeah yeah so yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Wisdom of Solomon 17, 24 through 26, because it talks about granting them return. And, and when you return, offend less. And in Wisdom of Solomon 11 and 23 talks about uh, you shall amend, which means you should be better. You know, the elect is going to get better over time, you know. But anyways, um, it says, I love the Most High's law with all my heart. 
But there is another power within me that is a war with my mind. Talking about your heart. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable man I am who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death. And that's your how shy. Going back to we're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye if we endure to the end. In 25, I think the most high that the answer is in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey the most high's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin, man. So, and then I want to end it with these scriptures right here. So it says, as a drop of water unto the sea and a gravel stone in comparison to the sand, so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. Therefore is the most high patient with them, that's talking about the elect, and pour forth his mercy upon them. He saw and perceived their end to be evil. Therefore, he multiplied his compassion. You know, that remind me of Micah 7 and 18. He said, who is a power like unto thee who passes over the transgressions of his remnant? All praises to Yahweh Bashem Shai, man. The mercy of man is towards his neighbor, but the mercy of the Lord is upon all flesh. He reproveth and nurtureth and teacheth and bring, bringeth again as a shepherd his flock. And that's what he did to all of us because we all was lost at one point in time. Then the Lord had mercy upon us and brought us back. As the saying in Jude 1 and 5, you once knew this, therefore I put you in remembrance. And it says, he have mercy on them that receive discipline. See, going back to wisdom of Solomon 11 to 23, that's what that, it talks about how we shall, um, we shall amend. And yeah, and, and um, Sirach 17 talks about offending lists. So it says, matter of fact, let's, uh, I keep quoting it, so I'm going to get it. Yep. So 24, but unto them that repent, he grant them return and comfort those that fell in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. I'm going to read 26. Turn again to the most high. He will turn away iniquity from, I mean, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thou abomination vehemently. That's talking about the sins. So this is this is the uh, mark of a man of the Lord, you know. And I'm gonna um, end it on this. This is what we hope for. Let me be weighed in an even balance that the Most High may know my integrity. Your integrity is your intent. That's what we hope to be judged by. So, you know. Hopefully this video was edifying and, you know, I did a little bit of rambling, but hey, this video is actually, um, it was hard for me to do because I really get sad about this subject, you know, but anyways, um, but hopefully, yeah, shalom to the hopeful elect, hopefully it's edifying and shalom to the next one, Lord willing.